Hey guys, this is Christine coming to you from the Cards by Christine studio here on a Tuesday, which means it's time for Tip Tuesday. And if you guessed at the end of last week that we were done with the Coloring 101 series, you probably would have guessed correct <laughs> at the time that that video was launched, or excuse me, aired. And after I was done with it, and Kelly watched all of them, she's like, well, what about re-inking ink? blah spots <laughs> you didn't do that one and you didn't go over the the spritzer and i'm like oh man <laughs> that means that we have to do one more in the series <laughs> so this will probably be the last coloring 101 for a little while because these videos will always be saved in the cards by christine facebook business page that you can always go and look at but we wanted to go over, or I wanted to go over with Kelly's advice, <laughs> how to ink up the little stampin' spots and also talk to you a little bit about the spritzers. So, and that would kind of round out the whole coloring <laughs> um, 101 series. So I'm gonna flip the camera down and I'm gonna show you in the catalog where you guys can see the stampin' spots. Now you might ask, well, why do I need a little stampin' spot? Well, they're very small and they're compact. So you can, travel with them and not take up a lot more space as in a little bit bigger of an ink pad. Um, and just in case you don't wanna make the full investment in a larger ink pad, you could potentially buy re-inkers and buy these little stampin' spots and it would be a lot smaller of an investment, especially if you're just beginning and you don't know if you want to make an investment in getting a whole plethora of ink pads. So those are just a couple ways or reasons why you might want to get the Stampin' Spots. Uh, if you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you get a Stampin' Spot in every Paper Pumpkin. Sometimes they give you two. Uh, and I think twice a year they do two spots in one Paper Pumpkin. And so over the course of a year, they don't, as far as I know, they don't duplicate a color. So if you've been a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, for a few months or even a half a year to a year, you've started to get your own little collection of these little stamp pads. So let's flip down so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, let's get some light on the subject here. Okay, we have here the annual catalog, page 129, and you can see these little guys, they're right here, these little spots. They're called Uninked Stampin' Spots. There's five of them for $9. Make your own small ink pads with uninked Stampin' Spots and classic Stampin' Ink refills. The other thing we're gonna talk about on this page here is number eight, the Stampin' Spritzers. You can fill these empty bottles with water or rubbing alcohol. Uh, you get, I believe, two spritzers for $3. So that's where it is uh, on one page 129. It's on this section with all of where I've been working for the like, color for the last couple weeks. So, all right, these are the little babies. <laughs> They're widow. <laughs> They're really, really widow. So when you want to compare them to an ink pad, let's grab an ink pad so you can see the size difference, okay? <laughs> it's a lot smaller. So if you find yourself that you do traveling and you like to take ink pads with you and you don't want to take 10 of these bigger ink pads, you could take 10 and it really wouldn't take up a lot of space. Um, the other thing too is if you, this is $7.50, these five are $9, and then an, a reinker is $3.75. So you could get, I don't know what that ends up being, if this is $2 and this is $3.75, um, you get the reinker though. That's the amazing thing is you get all this ink in here, and you can use this. We've, we talked about reinkers, that they're awesome. It's always good to have the reinkers when you have ink pads, no matter how how much you use your ink pads, there's other ways and uses for your ink, for these re-inkers. So um, they all stack on top of each other. So for storing, they kind of like lock in place so that you can stack them high. Um, the covers have this slight little, like they, they're not tight, but they're not loose. So they don't just fall off. Um, there's this bit of fabric on the top I don't know if you can see that it's used to be how Stampin' Up's ink pads used to be, like a little fabric, and then they have a little bit of foam on the side. Um, I do like, um, so when you have these ink pads and you store them, you can see they are stored upside down, so the ink is always at the surface. Well, with these guys, you would want to store them upside down, kind of like your memento or your stays on, you store it upside down so that the ink stays at the surface. Okay, so they're stackable. If you are gonna transport these, I would highly recommend storing them in a plastic bag, like a Ziploc bag. Um, 
washi tape might be good here too. Like if you have some washi tape that you could, you know, just put a little bit on the side like that um, so that they don't accidentally open up on you and get ink all over <laughs> everything. <laughs> Always be precautionary, right? Think ahead to what might could happen, what could happen, not, <laughs> what might happen or could happen, not both at the same time. Okay, so these are the five ink pads. I'm just going to do a couple of them here. Um, I'm going to grab Magenta Madness, which is one of the ink colors. Shake up the reinker a little bit, and it's just like reinking an ink pad. We're going to set that over here, and there is quite the glare on that. So, uh, I've honestly, guys, I've never done this before. I watched a video on how to do it so that I would have all my questions answered. <laughs> but you just keep adding ink to this top part. And what will eventually happen is this ink will soak down into the pad and you will have a little baby ink pad. Now, it, it, it doesn't show lines. Like when you, this is magenta madness, when you re-ink an ink pad and you go like this, you get lines like that back and forth. So that's why we always take a spoon and kind of blend that out so that you don't have those little lines. Okay, so we're not done. I just did one coat and you can see on the side that the ink has not saturated down the side. So I'm gonna do another light little coat and you're, you're not gonna be able to use this instantaneously, guys. What I would recommend doing is if you get these, I would just spend the time re-inking all of them and then let them sit and soak for a bit, not upside down, let them soak so that they're, it goes down. Uh, the other thing you can do to help the sides get a little bit inkier faster is putting a little ink on the sides like this. If you get it on the edge, just grab your baby wipe and clean it up. And it's really hard to do this <laughs> from an angle here. Uh, what you're gonna do also is, what was I gonna say? I, I'm gonna take the spoon also and kind of squish it down, but you just gotta get the ink down into there. Let it sit for a little bit and come back to it. Okay, so I'm gonna do another coat here on the top. I honestly don't, I'm hardly using any ink, you guys. It, if, it, it didn't even make a dent. So you can get these little re individually. They're by all the color families. So I am gonna take and squish this a little bit back and forth and see if that will help push it down a little. You guys gotta be careful. <laughs> it's a very inky business, <laughs> not risky business. Not dangerous business, but inky business. You get it all over your fingers. <laughs> so let's go back here really quick while we give that a second. All the coloring stuff is under the color collections, which is here. The re-inkers are the third line down on all of these. You can buy them individually. But did I just get the ink there? I don't think so. But <laughs> it seems like it. On this next page... The couple pages, actually, there's some assortments. So you flip here to page 140, 126, and you can get the, the ink refills as bundles with a 10% savings, I'm pretty sure. Because they're 375, but it's 3375 for 10, so it makes it 338 for, per bottle. Um, and for these guys, though, they don't sell these in colors with a bundle. So just a little information on that. I'm going to do another row here or another layer of ink and we'll let that soak in you know what we're gonna actually test this with a stamp so we're gonna see how it goes all right so i do have a baby wipe right here so this is what i would <laughs> you guys i call everything baby wipes <laughs> it's a wipe <laughs> but you can take that and you can Clean off the edge if you like, so that you don't get it all over. How many of you have these little stampin' spots? I'm curious. Have you re-inked them yourself? Do you have any tips for anybody that's watching? Uh, if you wanna share them, you can definitely add them in the comments. Uh, inquiring minds want to know if there's any tricks to the trade with this. Um, like I had mentioned, I, 
I always buy the big ink pads, so this is news to me. <laughs> this is new to me. Um, let's see, what do I have a stamp? I have a little B here. Um, this is a non-stampin' up stamp, guys, so don't give me slack, but it is a B <laughs> for that matter. So let's see if we can make ourselves a pink B. <laughs> I, and like I said, you want to give it some time, but I'm curious how it stamps. Oh my gosh, it already stamps really nice. Okay, look at that, guys. We got a pink bee. It's <laughs> it's cute. It's stamped. And I didn't even have a piercing mat under here, and it's a photopolymer stamp, and it stamped it really good. So I would say I'm happy with that experience. <laughs> um, these should go perfectly fine. <laughs> so that is a little stampin' spot, you guys. And again, if you have some washi tape or something like that, you could put that on the side. Now, uh, some tricks for you guys. This bottom area is about one and eight, one and an eighth inch, about one and an eighth inch. If you have um, the colored cardstock that coordinates with this, you could cut yourself a one inch piece and put that in the bottom. Let's see, I'll show you real quick what I mean. Magenta Mathis. Look at this, I have a little scrap right here and we have a little baby trimmer. So let's cut ourselves a one inch piece here. It could be up to one and an eighth, but I'd rather just do an inch. And then what you can do is, let's grab a glue dot uh, and put that, whoa, where does it start? Way back there. Okay, that means that all that is garbage. So we'll put a little glue dot there and then you can put that right here if you wanted to. You could write the name of the color here because if you store it upside down, then you can see what color it is. Um, I also saw some advice on these stickers, you guys. If you do end up getting the big size ink pad, they have all these stickers. Now I end up putting all the stickers around here so no matter which way I'm looking at it, I can see the color and I put the one on the inside. If you don't put all your stickers on, I've heard that you can take these Let's see if I can get it off of here. You can take these stickers and actually put them around here too. If you want, you can put that. So then you've got a little bit of color going around the edge like that. So that is always an option if you want to add more color. Uh, the other thing you could do is print yourself some labels. Uh, if you have a little label maker, you could write Magenta Madness and put that on the top here so that it's named. But when I store these, I generally would store these upside down because then the ink will stay at the surface. For right now though, I see the ink is still transferring down to the pad. It's not quite all the way down here. So I'm gonna leave mine sit just like that. Okay, so that is how I would re-ink one of these little stampin' spots. So having to do with color and you can use this stamp and spot, just like you would use any ink pad, you can ink up your stamp like this. And um, if you want to get color out of here, you could put it on a block. And then now you could use your blender pen and dip into there. Um, you could dip in there with your Stella pen as well. So you can use it for coloring. Uh, so there's a little bit about that. <laughs> now we're gonna go to our spritzer to show you this. I think I missed having it live with me previously. Sorry, I was trying to throw something away there. You might have caught my nose. <laughs> okay, the stamp and spritzer. <laughs> oh man, this is a messy coloring for me. I'm not much of a messy stamper. <laughs> if you guys notice me and watch me through, I don't get messy very much. And so when it comes to putting color all over the place, like with a spritzer pen, oh man, <laughs> it makes me a little nervous. So. All right, so you get two of these, and you can see I already have a fluid in here. I probably, if I smell it, I bet it smells like rubbing alcohol. <laughs> um, rubbing alcohol dries faster than water. So let's just see here. What you would do, this is really old solution. Oh, that's rubbing alcohol. So you guys, when the pandemic hit and I started doing a Facebook Live video every day, I did from March, like whenever the 17th, 23rd, no, March 23rd, all the way to May something. I did a live every day. Um, during the week, not the weekends. And I did do a video and that's where I did, I created the solution in here. It's like maybe three quarters rubbing alcohol and a little bit of water. And the reason you add the rubbing alcohol is that it dries faster than water. And you're wondering, well, what else is in here? Well, you guys, you can add color 
to this spritzer and no longer available from Stampin' Up, but I bet if you guys have been around Stampin' Up for a little while, you have some of these all-purpose ink bottles. This one was frost white. There's a champagne mist. There was a gold one. There was a rose gold. Oh my goodness, I bet that's what this one is. I bet this is rose gold um, from that one kit with the blue and the pink and the copper. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, but in case you have these, they come in really handy if you wanna make a glittery, glittery, sparkly mess. <laughs> it's not a mess, I'm just kidding. But it makes it gorgeous. So what you would do, and I'm just gonna keep adding to this one. It's basically, if you smell it, you would trust me, It would. it's rubbing alcohol. And what's currently in here is one of these guys, but in a rose gold hue. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this white. And what this stuff is, it's shimmer. It's like glitter times 10 in a very concentrated form. So what you do, whoa, just watch it, watch it. I just want a little bit, a little bit, like that's enough, okay? <laughs> little, little, little bit. Um, so that's gonna add some sparkle and then we're gonna add some of this polished pink and a drop, two drops. I guess what you could do is start with a drop and see how much color a drop adds. And then if you wanna add more, you can always add more, but let's put the cover on and shake it up like a salt shaker. Look at that, did you guys just see how it changed to this pink, pinkalicious color? Whew, look at that. Okay, you can see some of the glitter sitting in the bottom. Now, if you like a little darker, you go a little darker and we're gonna make one more drop in here and see if we make it a little darker. But this is a way to add a little bit of shimmery background color to your project. Now, now that you have this concoction drafted up, what do you do, <laughs> right? You, you protect yourself and your environment, <laughs> okay? And what I mean by that is, if you were watching me the other day, Thursday, uh, um, Sunday, was the Let's Just Stamp, I did the, oh, what card was it? It was this card right here. We took the Stella pen and we splattered brown, the espresso all over, like with the Stella pen. Well, you, guys, it went all over here. I can see it all up and around. So <laughs> what do you do to protect yourself? You line yourself up with paper, <laughs> okay? So when you put paper everywhere, right? To protect your environment, <laughs> okay? And what you'll do is put this down and you have to practice, you guys. You're never gonna get it right on the first try. I Ask me, I know, I, I don't, I rarely get things right on the first try. The only reason it looks like I do is because I've been doing it for 20 years and I've had many first tries many years ago. Um, this is a trick of where do you hold this now if once you wanna spray it? Well, let's just practice not on what you're gonna actually stamp on. So, okay, you can't see it on the purple, but on the white, oh, I don't even know if you can see it. It's really faint. It's like pink. It's very shimmery pink. And let's try. You guys can see it, right? It's pink. Okay. So you're getting that shimmery. So now here's the deal though. You got all these little splotches. And so I'm hoping that they will dry clear. And that's all in your <laughs> maneuvering of your finger, I think. It's how fast or slow you press it, <laughs> maybe. So what we'll try on our, our, this is our basic white circle, leftovers from a class, and there. So you would now let this sit and dry, but it created this kind of cool pinkish hue. It's actually very shimmery, you guys. We talk about Stella being on steroids. This is Stella on steroids, and you can see my paper is curling because it's wet. Well, when it's dry, it'll flatten out when you go to put it on a card, but I'm trying to see if I can, let's get that out of my hand. I can show you some shimmery to it. I don't know if I'll be able to capture it, but it added the, you can see here, there's white and there's the pink that it got added to it. So it's, and it's, it's very glitterific. So, uh, but again, you guys, it's sprayed out all the way around here. So sometimes if you have a box, if you build yourself a little box that has a wall, a wall and a wall, that you don't care what happens on the inside, then you could set this in there and the spray will go all over. So you wanna protect the environment <laughs> when it comes to this 
spritzing here of the spritzer. Okay, so we covered the re-inking of a spot, or I should say not even re-inking, but the inking of a stamping spot, and we talked about the spritzer. So I think all in a nutshell, I know I have not covered absolutely every way of coloring over these last four weeks, but I've covered a lot of different ways. And the main goal of this little series with coloring was to show you guys different ways to color, just to open your eyes that there's not just one way to add color to a project and kind of explain what the different things are and why you might like one over another. Uh, so if you ever have questions about coloring, just remember you can come back to these videos and rewatch them. They're always housed in the Cards by Christine Facebook business page. And what you can do is go to that little, you know, the video section and go to the little magnifying glass and search for coloring. I think what we did is we, we named them all the same thing, like coloring 101. Um, I'll have to double check, but hopefully we'll put like part one, part two, part three, and part four. So you guys can always come back and refer to them in the future. So woohoo! We did it, guys. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and we will catch you on Thursday for the next card class and also catch Kelly on Thursday for Technique Thursday. So lots of sunshine and love and hugs, you guys. We'll see you later. Bye.